Hey guys, it's Yuzora, and today we are looking at the Velos, the brand new tier 9 premium uh, pan European destroyer. And basically, the ship is a Euros flavored Fletcher. Like, there is not much else to say about it. Mm. She's like stepping inside a time machine and going back five years in the past. It's a very vanilla destroy, if I can say it like that. She has no special gimmick, no top of the road booster, no heal, no semi AP shells. Yeah, it's it's Fletcher, but slightly out of. Now you might ask, well, slightly out of the... Okay, but in what ways exactly? So, first and foremost, when it comes to the firepower, um, unlike the Fletcher, she only gets four guns instead of five. However, she gets a much better reload time on them, with the base reload time being 2.5 seconds. So... While she's losing one turret, the DP actually increases a bit compared to the Fletcher. Now it's not by much, it's something like 10k GDPM. So it is not a crazy difference. But I have to admit that it gives the ship a fairly solid firepower. She won't be an outstanding gunboat, like, if you want to farm damage from smoke, um, Groningen, or Friesland, or Itakaze, for example, all of these are much better options. The Velos... She will still do more than fine when it comes to uh, farming damage, damage from smoke and dealing with destroyers that are Anything but gunboats, basically. Although for for some gunboats, she's still alright. I mean, as I said, it is still a solid DPM. So if you have to engage on a destroyer, she will be able to trade quite fairly against it, unless it's really a powerhouse like. A Mogado, as I was saying before, Kitakaze, or, and that's the most painful one, uh, Groningen or Friesland that caught you with, uh, with the Hydro. In that case, yeah, you, you will suffer for sure. Other than that, Problem solved, sir. she, uh, just like the kid, only has one torpedo launcher. However, unlike the kid, it has uh, 122 seconds reload, if I remember correctly. On the Velos, the torpedoes reload in 60 seconds. Which is actually quite massive. You have the same torpedoes as on the Fletcher. So 10.5 uh, kilometer range, uh, 66 knots, and a bit more than 19,000 damage per, uh, per hit. And, uh, well, as much as these torpedoes are some of the oldest in our tier, they remain some of the best, honestly. They have good speed, good, good uh, detection range, high damage, good range. These torpedoes are just incredibly solid, even today. Also, unlike the the rest of the USDDs. She actually benefits from the pan-European uh, torpedo spread, so she can either drop them as what would be other other nations uh, narrow spread, or as the pan-European super narrow spreads, which is quite convenient because when you're basically sure of the path that an enemy ship will be taking. You're just maximizing the chances of hitting your target. 
and the, as I was saying with the 60 seconds reload so you let's see with the reload with the with the captain skill you can get it down to 54 seconds and then you have adrenaline rush or I guess if you want to you could take the the torpedo reload mod uh, on the on the sixth slot, but she isn't. If only one torpedo tube, it's not exactly what I would call call worth it. He's more of a of a hybrid destroyer than a gunboat or a dedicated torpedo boat. Personally, I would say you will be better off taking the main battery load modification. Then again, you do you. You do you. Now, I have a bit of a problem with this ship. He's by absolutely no mean a bad ship, but these days I can't call her a great ship because she's she's quite literally outdated before release. That's a ship that should have been released like four years ago. Today there isn't much competitiveness in this ship. There are just so many destroyers at especially at tier nine that are just so much better, so much more Adapted to today, uh, to today's meta. You have those with uh, main battery load booster. You have those with radar. You have those with hydroacoustic search, and so on and so forth. But as the Velos, yes, she's she is just from five years ago, and the other thing that makes me. Not really confident in recommending this ship is the way she will be available. So, uh, starting from the 21st of October, she will be available in a new web campaign, so just like the USS Black back in the days. Now, for this campaign, I have pretty much zero details. But considering that they told us it would be similar to that, to the campaign for the Black. One can assume that you'll have to play doubloons if you want to get the ship. And also, I suppose that the skin she I'm currently using right now, which is the Greek uh, Tree Ram, which is a pretty look, good, look, good looking skin. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that you, it will be only available through that campaign. Now, once the campaign is over, she will become available later on, so they said it would be at the start of 2023, but uh, she will only be available for the blues. Yes, just like the... which one, which one was it? The Giuseppe Verdi or the Dalian? If you want to get that ship, it will be 19,300 doubloons. All the equivalent in cash, so... What is it these days? Something like... Wasn't it something like 61 euros? So, yeah, personally... As I told you, it's definitely not a bad ship. But I'm not really sure why you would spend that much money on what is, as I was saying, an outdated designer. Now, I'm pretty confident that War Game will still get quite a lot of, uh, of income from this ship because I'm pretty sure the whole of Greece is looking forward to it. But yeah, it's kind of sad to see her being locked uh, 
behind doubloons and in the premium shop. Four ship are important because also the ship has quite an intriguing history when it comes to uh, her, seri her service in Greece. I would have expected them to at least make her far more widely available than just lock between behind the Dublin price. So yeah, yeah, that's quite a shame. Now, if you want, because I'm sure there will be plenty of people who will still want the ship. I mean, yeah, she's she's all right. As I was saying, she is definitely not a bad a bad destroyer. She is, well, just like the rest of the U.S. destroyers, a good all-rounder. She has pretty good firepower. The torpedoes, well, it's only a single launch, they reload super fast, and the torpedoes themselves they are super, super good. So, yeah, I can't say that you should avoid at all costs this ship if you fully feel like it. Uh, there is just one thing I would need to precise. I, I was saying it's a uh, Euros flat, it's a uh, Euros flavored Fletcher. However, unlike the U.S. destroyers, she is not getting the special uh, defensive AF fire. You know, though, for them it's two uh, hundred percent DPS, and I think it's four hundred percent damage from flak. Not much anymore. Whereas for the um, the Velos, it's only plus 50% and plus 200%. So that's, I guess, one thing to keep in mind. But then again, we'll not exactly play for the NTR, let me tell you that. In any case, yeah, that's pretty much it for Velos. A solid ship, but sadly locked behind the bay wall. Which is, in my opinion, truly shame. Anyway, that's all for me, folks. See you later.